Hi, this is Todd with Land of Map. In this video, we're looking at absolute value. And we're going to break this film down into three different sections. Number one, we're going to look at the basics or the fundamentals of absolute value. Number two, we're going to look at how you can model absolute value on a number line. And then finally, we're going to look at different situations when we're solving math problems where we might use absolute value. All that's coming up next on the Land of Math. All right, first we're going to talk about the fundamentals of absolute value. Absolute value is just basically the distance a number is away from zero. Now, how do you actually read it? When you're looking at the absolute value, you're going to see a line on the right and the left side, usually a little higher and lower than the number itself. The number that's inside is what we're trying to find the absolute value of. So in these two examples, this would be the absolute value of 7, and the next one would be the absolute value of negative 11. And you see we have the lines on both the right and the left side. Occasionally, um, students will get confused between the absolute value and a parenthesis. Sometimes just teachers getting sloppy, sometimes kids just confused. So just a reminder, the absolute value has to have straight, so straight lines on each side, and the parentheses will have the curve lines on both sides. When we go to model absolute value, one of the best ways to model it is using a number line. So for example, I have an absolute value of four, and the absolute value of four is a positive four. This next one, we're trying to find an absolute value of negative four. And it also has an absolute value of four. So for your modeling on the number line, you would just start with, in this case, the positive four, and you would just show that you would move this four times or four places to get to zero. And the same thing would happen with the negative four. You would move four times, and eventually you would end up at zero. So what's going to happen is both of these numbers have the same absolute value. And what you're going to notice is numbers that are opposite of each other. So for example, the four and negative four are going to have the same absolute value. Here's a couple other examples of this. Negative eight and eight have the same absolute value. 77 and a negative 77, they have the same value. You can see they both have eight or they both have 77. Another thing that's going to come up occasionally is inside the absolute value, you're going to have a variable. So in this case, I have the letter Y. And so in this case, it says the absolute value of Y is equal to 10. Well, there's actually two possible answers that we could have here. Obviously, we could have a positive 10, but we could also have a negative 10. So anytime you have a variable inside of your absolute value signs, you're going to actually have two different answers. Next are a few examples of actually using absolute value to help solve math problems. So the first is finding the difference between two numbers, a positive and negative, on a number line. So in this example, um, we're going to find we're going to put one of our points over here in this negative three, and our other point we're going to use is a positive five. So if we're looking at the distance between a negative three and a positive five, our first step is to find the absolute value of this negative three. And the absolute value of a negative three is three. Next, we're going to find the absolute value of the positive five, and the absolute value of that happens to be five. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this absolute value of 3 and the absolute value of 5, and we're just going to add these two numbers together. And when we do this, we get 8, or a positive 8. So that's the distance between this negative 3 and the positive 5. So next we're going to look at a vertical number line, similar to the last one, but it's going to go up and down. And we're going to look at the temperatures of Phoenix and Bangor. Phoenix is 90 degrees, Bangor is 20, so we want to find, or negative 20, we want to find the distance between these two. So we can go ahead and plot our points. There's 90 for uh, Phoenix, and there's negative 20 for Bangor. And we're trying to get the distance between these two. So just like last time, we're going to end up adding their absolute values. The absolute value of 90 is 90. The absolute value of a negative 20 is going to be a positive 20. In this situation now, all we're going to do is we're going to add up the absolute values. 90 plus 20 is 110 degrees, or just 110. So when we're looking at the difference in the temperatures between these two cities, the answer would be 110. So next we're going to look at mean absolute deviation, which is a problem that we do in uh, middle school. So I've already done some of the work. I've added the numbers up, got 72, divided by 3, and got 24 as my mean. And I subtracted the mean, and I got these numbers right here. And so I'm going to find the absolute value of each of these. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and the absolute value of 6 is 6. And now I'd complete the rest of this problem. So I would add these numbers up and get 12. 
I would divide by three because there's three numbers. And so my mean absolute deviation would be four. All right, the next example is when we're adding and the signs are different. So we're kind of dealing with integers here. So here's an example, a negative seven plus a positive four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the absolute value of both of these. The absolute value of negative seven is seven. The absolute value of four is a positive four. So we have the absolute values of both of them. So what we do in this situation is we would take the sign of the larger absolute value. Well, seven's absolute value is larger than four, so the sign was a negative. And then because the signs are different, we find the difference between their absolute value, and so our answer is a negative three. If we look at this next example of negative six plus a positive 11, we find the absolute values of both of them. So absolute value of negative six is six, absolute value of 11 is 11. We're gonna take the sign of the larger absolute value. In this case, 11 is bigger and it's positive. And then because they're different, we find the difference between the two, which is five or a positive five. And our last example is maybe if you're solving an equation and the absolute value might be part of it. So in this example, I have the absolute value of x plus two equals five. We would solve this equation by subtracting two from both sides and that would give us the absolute value of x is equal to three. And as we looked at earlier in the film, there's actually two answers it could be. It could be a positive three, or it could be a negative three. I hope the video was helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and we would love if you would subscribe to the channel. And until then, we'll see you next time on The Land of Math.